Are you ready for rapid fire? I'm always ready for rapid fire, baby. Let's All go. Right, Let's baby. do this thing. All right, baby. Let's start with this one. Fill in the blank. It's blank that former Irish linebacker Prince Collie will reunite with Clark Lee at Vanderbilt. It's about time. Like, everybody and their brother knew that when he entered the transfer portal from Notre Dame to go someplace else, everybody knew that he was going to go meet up with Clark Lee and Vanderbilt. Why in God's name did it take this long for them to announce it? I, you got me. Maybe their admissions process is as stringent as Notre Dame's or whatever. I, I, I don't know. But this is the least shocking surprise on the planet with where a transfer was going to head from Notre Dame. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, when you, when you look at this whole thing, like, I completely agree with what you're saying. It, like the fact that it took this long, I think is the biggest head scratcher and he's reunited, reunited with Clark Lee who recruited him down there. Yep. You know, it's like, now you got two reunions. Actually, you got Buckner and, and Reese down at Alabama and you got Lee and Kali and Vanderbilt, both in the sec, by the way, <laughs> but you know what? Playing time over winning time, at least for the foreseeable future, they were five and seven last year, but, Kali should get to play a whole lot more and he's yeah. going to get to go play for somebody, you know, again, who is familiar with him because Clark Lee recruited him. So hopefully it works out well for both of them. You know, Clark needs to add some more talent to that roster down there in Nashville. Absolutely. And I, I think it's a good move for Prince because he was falling down the depth chart at Notre Dame. He'll almost, I would think without studying the depth chart at Vanderbilt, I can't imagine that he's not going to walk in the door as the starter, as the starter at one of the linebacker positions. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't see it being any other way. So he's going to get plenty of opportunity to put his skills on, on tape. And, and if he, you know, wants to play at the next level, he's going to get every opportunity to do that playing against SEC, you know, opponents all the time. I'll throw up a listener question here. How many years until Notre Dame football is a legit championship contender, Ohio state, Georgia, Bama level. He says he personally thinks 2024, and the last two recruiting classes are in their CFB prime. I know how this is going to sound. It's going to sound super duper homerish, but I, I think this year is where that window starts to open. Um, and I agree with everything that Joe said about the last two recruiting classes, etc. Those guys are going to be contributing this year. And if you want those guys to be as high level as we think some of them are, some of them are only going to be here for three years. This is year two. So they're in their prime or they're going to be getting there real quick. So, and then you add a trigger man like Hartman uh, at quarterback with all the experience and all the stats and everything that he has. I just think you've got one heck of a recipe for something special to happen. Now, a lot of things have to fall your way. I think they've got a better chance this year than they do next year. And it's simply because of the quarterback position. I don't know who the starter is going to be in 2024. Exactly. And that's why, like, I'm thinking about 2024 and I'm like, oh man, it'd be nice if you had Hartman for another yeah. year, but he can't stay in college forever. But Hartman definitely elevates him. And I've said all along, I think that they're at least going to be contending for a college football playoff spot. Now, when it comes to actually being able to beat those elite teams, like, like they're talking about, once you get to the playoff, I don't know until I see some of these guys, you know, like the Anyes and the Batellos and what does the linebacking core look sure. like? How does the safeties, you know, how, do, how does the safety depth hold up since they still haven't added anything there? And I know there was a question, I think, earlier that I don't think that we got to. We're still waiting to see what they're going to do, you know, whether it's the guy from Rhode Island or, or whatever, you know, sure. what they're going to do. At that you know there there are enough questions there's definitely young talent like i would feel good about next year if they had an experienced quarterback to throw yeah. in the mix but you, we don't know who the quarterback is going to be yeah. next year we don't know I, if it's going to be one of the young guys or if they're going into the portal again i i think they have to go to the portal regardless whether that kid starts or not i think they have to go into the portal and look if if tyler buckner stuck around and he was okay with you know the way things were going to go in 23 I'd have a lot of confidence in 24 about them just kind of taking that next step or, you know, continuing on from what they did in 23. But now that he's gone, 
I think there's massive question marks about 2024 at the quarterback position. I, I if you're if everybody's putting all their eggs in a true freshman CJ Carr's basket, that's a that's a dangerous place to be. And I'm not saying that CJ Carr isn't a good quarterback or isn't going to be a really good quarterback, but when you're trying to do that with a with a true freshman at the highest level, man, that's asking an awful lot. It's asking an awful lot. <laughs> Tommy's getting, you know, very impatient about his question about life on another point. I've got that starred, Tommy. Trust oh, me. Yeah. It's it's coming up. It's coming up. We we will we will answer that. That's right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> where did the where did the Shy Town question go? He threw another good one in. Who who will regret transferring more? Tyler Buckner or Drew Pine? <sighs> Tyler. I, I, I think it's Tyler. I really do. I think I think Drew has a great opportunity to play. And I don't think Tyler has a great opportunity, but maybe he does. I just there's so many things about the fit at Alabama that I just don't like. Maybe he has a great career down in Tuscaloosa. Maybe he does. I just my gut tells me that Tyler's gonna regret it when it's all said and done. When he hits 2024, he gets beat out this year, it's 2024. It's not even a competition, and he's just a backup. So he's either going to transfer again, and then he's still going to be looking, turning on NBC on Saturdays and seeing Notre Dame with no answer at quarterback, thinking mm-hmm. that could have been my job. Yeah. If he doesn't win the starting job this year, it's him because he's going to be in the exact same situation he would have been had he stayed. And he is also going to be behind whoever potentially beats him out for not just this year, but at least next year as well so now he could still win the job and maybe he doesn't regret it but if he doesn't win the job it's definitely him pine i think great opportunity for him because like he was not going to start again unless a couple guys get hurt and you know he's uh, you know like now had he stayed the scenario is different now because he's still the number two behind Sam Hartman, but obviously he didn't feel like he deserved to be the number two. That's why he left to begin with. Yeah. So by the way, Tommy, he said he is, uh, we, we, you brought up St. Louis. He says he's on his way (laughs) to Kansas city, Ponax Mexican food. Oh, you can find it, find it on your, your navigation, Ponax Mexican food or Joe's barbecue. Those are my two recommendations when you you roll through Kansas city. Hopefully you go through, in uh, in time to eat ponax probably have a better time finding a parking space for the truck Mm, at ponax than joe's because the joe's there's two very close together right where you you drive by i can't remember the name of the interstate now i always get them all confused there's a big interchange right there but um ponax excellent mexican that was our uh that was our old hangout back in the college days nice so yeah nice we still we still hit that Every once in a while, when we go through Kansas City, going back to uh, to Kansas as well, stop there. I always like the recommendations. I like it. <laughs> I do what I can. I do what I can. So American Athletic Conference Commissioner Mike Oresco has penned a letter calling for an end to the use of the term Power Five, Vince. Oresco says, in part, quote, The use of P5 has created a divide in football bowl subdivision, FBS football, that is not healthy and that is often not supported by competitive results on the field and court. The recent realignment in college athletics has further eroded the P5 concept. He goes on to say Power 5 is a media-created term and says it gives, quote, a perceived second-class status that often causes these non-P5 conferences to be ignored in media articles and discussion. And he says it is time to retire the P5 moniker and shift the focus and nomenclature to the 10 FBS conferences, end quote. End quote. So do you agree with the Resco? Is it time to end the term Power 5, Vince? I think Mike Oresco got beat up on the playground a lot. <laughs> That's what I think. Uh-huh. I think... I think, number one, he's got way too much time on his hands. Way too much time on his hands. Be like, ah, what should I do today? I'm going to write a letter about how we feel like we're second-class citizens in the football world. Like, come on, dude. You have to be able to differentiate the SEC, the ACC, you know, the Power Five, 
I'm saying it, the top five conferences in the country, you have to be able to differentiate those from the rest. I'm sorry. The SEC is different from the MAC. The Big Ten is different from the American, right? They just are, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. They're not competing with each other for players, right? You see guys mm-hmm. with all kinds of MAC offers from around here, and then you see guys with SEC offers. It's not the same crop of kids. It's okay to differentiate the difference between those top tier and the next level. Even though everybody's Division One or FBS or whatever you want to call it, there's still a differentiation from here to here, and yes. that's okay. That's okay. We don't it's- all have to give each other hugs and sing Kumbaya all the time. Yes. So stupid. It is part of life. It doesn't matter what what field you're in. There is a class system. Yes. There, there is there is Division One. There is Division Two. There is Division Three. You know, like even the NCAA is broken up into classes, and it, it's just you know, there's there's Major League Baseball and there's Minor League Baseball. Both are professional baseball, but one level is higher than the other. You know, and like. One level, using the baseball as an example, has games broadcast on broadcast TV. But, you know, like every game is on TV. And then, of course, some end up on national TV as well. Whereas if you're in the minor leagues, you're probably lucky to get one or two games or a handful of games on during the season on TV. Everything else, if you're lucky, it's streaming. Just like what? The group of five. Like, you know, that's where most of their games are going. And what determines... Who has the power in all this? The money. Where does the majority of the money come from? The TV contracts. You know, that's what drives the whole bus on everything. These power five conferences, and that's what they are. They have the power because they have the big TV yep. deals. And Now, obviously, the SEC and the Big Ten have the most lucrative deals. But, you know, all of the conferences still have TV deals, you know. And, like, look at the American, you know, like, All these schools are leaving the, you know, you have schools like UCF or Houston or whoever have these nice seasons, Cincinnati, a nice season every now and then, but what's going on now? They're all jumping ship to where there's more money in the big 12 chance for more money, more exposure to help out their programs. It's just the way the world is. And there's, there's no reason like at, at the very least, you know, I've seen some people saying this, okay. So we won't say power five anymore. We'll just say power two because the big 10 and the SEC are gaining more power, you know, with between schools jumping to them and the TV money and everything else. But I I think it's ridiculous to, to say, you know, to, that you need to end the use of this. It's, it's basic supply and demand. And there's just very, there's just less demand for the product in these, Group of five conferences. That's just the way it is. Not everything is equal. Yeah. I mean, not everything is equal. Welcome to life. Welcome to reality. Not everything is equal, right? I mean, when when my kid starts to get recruited by for whatever sport that he wants to play, I'm going to know really quick how good he is based on the offers that are coming his way. Are they NAIA? Are they Division Three? Are they Division Two? Are they Division One? Are they Power Five? Are they MAC? Like, you're going to know really quickly where you land on the pecking order. And it's okay to voice that verbally that there's a difference. It's okay. It's okay. I don't really think that somebody going to central Michigan, for example, is feeling super bad for themselves as they're getting a free education at central Michigan and still playing division one football. Yeah. It's okay. Because if his team regularly went up against big 10 teams, they would lose all the time. They would, they would win a game or two maybe every year, and it would be terrible. Life's not equal. They want to play against teams that are equal to them. That's why they play in the MAC. You know? It just is what it is. Yes, I agree. All right, let's move on then to another interesting one. But someone else wants to end the, the use of something. Jay Williams from ESPN says it's time for people who talk about sports, people like us, to stop using the Mount Rushmore metaphor when talking about the greats of, you know, different things. You know, in other words, what's the Mount Rushmore of NFL quarterbacks or what's the Mount Rushmore of baseball players? You know, whatever 
subject that you want to pick. William says it's time to retire it because they're not even the four best presidents this country oh. has ever had. Now, of course, as always, we're, we're not here to talk about politics and, you know, who the best president is. But right. do you buy or sell what Williams is saying here? Retire the Mount Rushmore metaphor. First of all, working in talk radio and sports and all of that over the last almost 20 years, it's something to talk about. Like it is, it is a topic of conversation that gets the conversation flowing and allows for a debate. Right. That's what. Who's this the Mount Rushmore of X? Yes. And this is and this guess is all what? about. Guess what? Like this summer, you'll probably hear some Mount Rushmore topics come up from time to time. <laughs> right. It's right. on the docket. It's been on the docket for a yes. while. <laughs> yes. And is he is he correct that? The four presidents that are on Mount Rushmore are not, as of as we sit here right now, the four best presidents of all time. No, because they didn't just create Mount Rushmore yesterday. Right. So the, <laughs> there have been like what fourteen like, or fifteen presidents since then. Uh, and, you know, like whatever you think. And again, you know, like we're not talking your, politics. I'm your just opinion, but the, yeah, but your right. opinion on who the best is is right. largely dependent on which you know what your party affiliation is to begin with. And again, for that's sure. not the road that I want to go down. But for sure. Yeah. No, I get that. And 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 just for the record, if I was putting together a Mount Rushmore, I would have Republicans and Democrats on there. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> right. Uh but the ever Vince playing down the middle. That's I'm fine. just saying well, but because it's true. It's true. I can at least see things for the truth. Um but at the same time, it all it is we say Mount Rushmore, right? That that's the terminology that we use. But we're just talking right. about who's the best, and that's a great way to say it. It's who's the best, and that gives us a number, a nice clean. It's funny number like, of we, four. We, we never say like we use the term goat, you know, greatest of all time, which you know I think you could argue whether or not that needs to be retired. Seriously. But but we don't say who's the Statue of Liberty of football players or who's the sta-? you know what I mean? Like right. that's another iconic. Figure. We, we never use that one. It is just the four heads up there in granite on Mount Rushmore. So, right. It, it's just a uh, something to get the topic flowing, you yes. know, and, and it just so happens exactly. that there's something out there that has four faces on it that we can talk yeah. about. You know, if you're going to if you're going to pick the four best of all time, who are you going to pick? That's uh... it again. Now, to his point, you know, he's saying you shouldn't use it because they're not necessarily the four best and, and we use it because we're saying well who's the four best so correct but correct. but at the same time it's just an easy metaphor to use when you're talking about the top guys <laughs> in in right. whatever sport or whatever field that it happens to be and again don't be shocked if you see some Mount Rushmore topics pop up on the show yes exactly <laughs> well, it, it, it's just yeah it's just it's just funny to me I I don't know I and the whole like you know you know the the top four presidents of all time would go down the part like the parties that the guys that are up there they, they didn't even have parties like George Washington wasn't even affiliated with a party you know what I right. mean and he's on there he's the first one he belongs on there it just again I think he's been hanging out with Oresco too long they got to like what can we do to stir things up like let's write a letter or let's exactly. say something stupid and get some play on it like that's how I feel this is called. Yes. So the NFL releases its full 2023 schedule tomorrow, but they've done some of the pre-release stuff over the last couple of days. A bunch of them came out first thing this morning. Chiefs Bengals New Year's Eve is one of the big games. What do you think about them playing that one so late in the season, Vince? I don't like it because it's too close to the playoffs and it feels like they're inevitably going to face off in the playoffs. Um, that's why I don't like it so late. I would rather have it earlier. That way we have a little bit of intrigue going into the playoff matchup. It, it, it's just going to be too close. It's going to be too close together uh, having it that late in the season. That's that's what I don't like about that. Yeah, it seems like they're wasting the opportunity to yeah. have a good primetime game, like yes. in the middle of October or even November, you know, like when sweeps mm-hmm. and stuff, like TV sweeps and, and, and that kind of thing are going on. And just what you're saying, like you could see them rematch again within a couple of weeks after right. that. So I don't think that's good. And like worst case scenario, one of the teams could also end up not being any good. And so that could affect the matchup 
that late in the season. And then you also have, they could both be such in the driver's seat in their divisions that they don't even need to play either right. Burrow or Mahomes. And that That's could affect the matchup. Good call. That's a you good know? call. So I'm really surprised that they put it that late. But again, from what I understand, reading some Peter King stuff earlier this week, this whole, they're, they're changing the TV network, like who controls I the broadcast that. for road games. So, you know, like we talked about this yesterday, but like in the past, the way it's been done forever, the visiting team, like whoever that typically has that network, like if it's the Cowboys, that's Fox. So if the, the Cowboys were on the road, Fox would get the broadcast if they that's were playing they against an okay. AFC team. Or, you know, like hmm. if it's the Chiefs, obviously, it's the AFC. So if they went on the road, it would be CBS. They are doing away with that yeah, this year. open so season. Now, all those games are up for grabs. So they're still trying to protect, I think, you know, like Fox obviously wants the Cowboys for a minimal number of games. CBS oh, sure. is going to want the Chiefs for a minimal number of games because they're going to be a hot come up, you know, all those different kind of things. So I, I guess it was a little more complicated. So I don't know how that played into, you sure. know, maybe this game getting pushed back to where it was. I don't like it either. I don't yeah. like it. What about the Black Friday game? They announced the first Black Friday game. Jets, Dolphins, your favorite quarterback playing on Black Friday, day after Thanksgiving on Amazon, 3 o'clock. Do you like that? I like it because Black Friday's boring. <laughs> and I like that there's going to be football. Now, there's been some college games on Black Friday here the past couple of years. Um, a lot of them have been stinkers, if I remember correctly. So I will be more than happy to sit back and relax on Black Friday and watch uh, the Jets and my favorite quarterback lose. Yeah, all about it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Like, I, I think it's a like you got to make use of Aaron Rodgers in New York. Yes. And this whole Black Friday thing put, you know, you've got the New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers playing a divisional game against hopefully Tua is is still healthy by then. And, you know, playing that game day after Thanksgiving when most people are still home from work anyway. I love it. I love the fact yep. that, that that's I think that's a great matchup. That's like that's that's a perfect matchup, I think, for a game like that day after Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Speaking of Thanksgiving, they're you know those will be the games that they announce tomorrow. We know the Cowboys are going to play a home game. We know the right. Lions are going to play a home game. Yep. So let's try to predict who they're each mm. going to play. So the Cowboys' home opponents: Giants, Eagles, Commanders, Lions. We know they won't play the Lions. I was going to say not going to be the Lions. Yep. yep. Rams, Patriots, Jets, Seahawks. So predict who you think the Cowboys play on Thanksgiving Day. I would love for it to be a game that mattered, right? And so I feel like it's got to be a divisional game. And if I'm picking the best other team in their division, it would be the Eagles. So I would love for it to be Cowboys Eagles on Thanksgiving. Ooh, I, I don't, I don't want that because I don't <laughs> want it to potentially. <laughs> I'm just so sick of my whole day being ruined by the <sighs> which I guess is going to happen no matter what. You know the way <laughs> recent history has gone down. I'm picking the Rams. I think that that would be oh, okay. a good. It, I well, think they that stunk that would, last year. Hopefully they're yeah, better. Because I think they played the Giants on Thanksgiving last year, maybe. And so that okay. actually turned out okay, if I remember right. But that was, I was in another country, if you remember. So <laughs> I can't exactly. I do remember, yes. can't exactly remember. But I'm going to go the Rams. I think that they'll play the Rams. You know, doesn't matter who they play because it's going to get a big audience. But I'll say Rams play Cowboys okay. on Thanksgiving Day. That would be a different one. Uh, how about the Lions? They play the Packers, the Bears, the Vikings, the Falcons, the Panthers, the Broncos, the Raiders, and the Seahawks. So that's easy for me. I want it to be the Bears because I like to have – number one, I like to root against the Lions because my father-in-law will be sitting next to me at Thanksgiving. He's a Lions fan. So <laughs> right. I like having a dog in the fight. So I, I enjoy that matchup on Thanksgiving. And and, and second of all well, – I guess that's not second. I said it. I like, I like watching my team on Thanksgiving. I – I'll watch any football, obviously, because it's always on. But it's nice to have my team playing when I can actually sit down and watch them play. It, it most of the time during the season, I'm rewatching the Notre Dame game. You know, I'm doing a lot of other things. So I would love to have a day where I can just sit down and watch them play. That's fair, but it's also spoken like someone who doesn't have to 
sit and be miserable every single year watching the team play on Thanksgiving. This, this so. is true. <laughs> and I would be because the Bears have stunk since 1985. Right, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Raiders. I think that that would be a really good Thanksgiving primetime matchup. You know, again, they can put any opponent in there against the Lions and people are going to watch it. In of course, high commodity, you know, high numbers because of the fact that it is on Thanksgiving, just what you're talking about. Everyone's home that day. It's going to be the early game. A lot of people are still, you know, getting, you know, cooking their stuffing and their turkey and all that different stuff. And, you know, the guys are just sitting around doing nothing, waiting for the food to come out, you know, yeah, absolutely. Unless, you know, unless you're smoking your turkey or something in the backyard. But <laughs> yeah, I'll say Raiders. Uh, I'll go with Raiders as my pick for the Lions. Okay. I By the way, I'm already the I'm already off on one pick because we tried to pick who the Chiefs yesterday. Jesse and I tried to pick who the Chiefs are going to play to open up the season, you know, because they'll mm. get that that Thursday kickoff game. I said Dolphins, but that is going to be in Frankfurt, Germany. I went with the oh. Tyreek Hill returning to Kansas City, but he doesn't get to return to Kansas City because it's going to be in Germany instead. <laughs> they announced that today. So and they didn't they do uh, didn't they do Chiefs Bills to open up last season? So they're probably not going to do that again. Didn't, isn't that what they did? No, it's always the Super Bowl winner. So it wouldn't have been the Chiefs last okay. year. All right, but I mean, it was it was probably like the Sunday night game or something maybe that's like what that. it was. Sunday or I thought Monday it was an early Monday. it was an early matchup, and I just remember all the promos having all of the the stuff from the uh, the playoffs, and they were going back and forth. You know, you know how that game went, and. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that that's what I remember. But. Okay, last question tonight from Tommy <laughs> Guns. Do you guys think our planet is the only planet in the universe to sustain life? I'm not asking if you think they visited Earth or anything, just if life exists somewhere else. Feel free to expand. I mean, look. The short answer is yes. I do believe there are other planets in the universe. Because the universe is pretty freaking big. The universe is too big life. for not for not right. to have some other planet yes. out there somewhere with life. Completely agree with that. And we can't and look, be I, that unique. <laughs> I am an unabashed, I think that's how you say it, unabashed, unabashed, whatever, fan of like Star Trek. I got to believe. Did you ever watch The X-Files? I never did. See, that was like, see that, I don't know. It's There's like a line of like extraterrestrial and like, I don't know that I could never get involved with, but so I, I think that there is, yes. You know, will it, will it look like something like a Star Trek or something like that? Probably not. Uh, but I do think that there is planets out there that can sustain life. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was an X-Files watcher and I started to do a rewatch a while back, but really, I, I, I stopped. It's on, they had it on Hulu and I stopped after, because it was one of those that, you know, I couldn't get, like, sh- my wife watched it with me the first time it was on, but I couldn't get her to, you know, to, to get into the rewatch. But <laughs> I do believe that there's got to be something out there, because like I just said, the, the universe is just too darn big for there not has to, be to be another planet that has yeah. life someplace. So. It has to be. Now, maybe we can't get to it, which is definitely <laughs> a possibility, but, yeah, you know, yes, has to be. I yeah. can't imagine there's one planet in the entire universe that can sustain life. Like, that's silly. It's silly. I agree. I've been through Roswell, New Mexico, by the way. Like, all the crazy. Like, I didn't oh, see yeah. anything. Didn't see anything completely off the wall when I was, you know, but they do have, you know, like some, some. Uh, well, they live it up. Yeah, exactly. What do you, what do you call them? <laughs> you know, like fake Martians or oh, sure. whatever. They, and they play like, up the Roswell. Yeah, they play that up big time. Yeah. By the way, I saved a few questions that we didn't get to tonight that I thought would be good uh, for the next couple nights. So we've got some extra questions that we'll uh, that we'll kind of use for rapid fire. We're a little you know light on content right now, so I'm scavenging (laughs) whenever I can find Uh, smart some extra stuff. Like other than all this stuff going on with basketball, you know, just the the signings and commitments and stuff like that. There just hasn't been that much going on around here right now playoff baseball like were, in college is coming right around the corner though i know well and unfortunately yeah i know notre dame dropped two out of three to nc state last weekend and they're really they've yeah. really pushed themselves into a corner where yeah. I, I think they've almost 
probably got to get like at least to the ACC championship, if not win the whole thing to get yeah. into the NCAA tournament. And they're definitely point. not going to be hosting, I wouldn't think. So no, no. <laughs> Sean is slightly where he was abducted. Rand, you know, Randy Quaid in uh, Independence Day, <laughs> my hero. <laughs> uh, that's great. Yes. All right. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Smash the like button on your way out. And of course, your weekly reminder to subscribe, rate, and review. We've got uh, a lot more coming up. Tom Noy on tomorrow's show. We'll talk a lot of Notre Dame men's basketball, all the things that Micah Shrewsbury has done. It's been a busy six weeks for him, and Tom and I will talk about that on tomorrow's show. Jesse will be in for rapid fire as well tomorrow so we've got all that going and of course don't forget friday's show when we have the friday rapid fire so vince i will talk to you later enjoy your lacrosse game tonight <laughs> hey conference championships tomorrow night for track boom the kids trying to go back to back first team all conference we'll see what happens here we go here we go all right good luck all right we will talk to you tomorrow on ib nation sports talk